Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about isosceles and equilateral triangles. As we start to talk about isosceles triangles, I'm going to start out with this orange triangle here. And what I'm going to do is, for reference sake, I'm going to mark this outside with a dotted red line. I'm going to duplicate that red line on the other side and fill in the remaining area by copying that orange triangle. Now I have two orange triangles that are exactly the same size. I'm going to label the vertices A, B, and C for reference sake. And just as you saw when I duplicated this orange triangle, I now know that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. Because I duplicated this triangle, if I mark angle A with one arc mark, I can also mark angle B with one arc mark, because they're both the same angle, having been duplicated from the same triangle. If I trace the outside of this triangle with dark black lines, and then pull this triangle away from the others, you're going to see the general relationship that exists in isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle have two legs that are congruent. They're right here. Those two congruent legs are going to be opposite the two congruent base angles. The two congruent base angles and the two congruent sides are the features of the isosceles triangle. Using the same logic, I'm going to look at an equilateral triangle. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to label the three angles of this triangle, 30, 60, and 90. When I duplicate this triangle, I know that these angles are also 30, 60, and 90. I'm going to trace the outside of this triangle with dark black lines as well. And when I do that, I can label it ABC. Well, I notice that now I've formed one single triangle. Having one single triangle, I know that this is an isosceles triangle, and so the sides opposite the base angles are congruent, which means that those base angles are also congruent just like in an isosceles triangle. The difference here is that now, when I take away the insides, those two 30 degree angles at the top now form a 60 degree angle, and we know that because all triangles have 180 degrees in the three angles, each of them is the same. So I can mark that top 60 degree angle with an arc mark. Because the two other sides are the same, also the side opposite that third congruent angle is also congruent. A couple of things come from this about equilateral triangles. If a triangle is equilateral, then it must be equiangular. And also, if a triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. So if the three angles are all 60 degrees, then the three sides must be the same. And if the three sides are the same, then the three angles must be the same as well.